one of the reasons I think Memorial Park is so meaningful to so many people is because you can have a different experience every time you step into the park. I think the park is a great communicator about not the glory of war, but the dignity of remembrance of sacrifice. World War I was a totally different animal. It was a monster. The European powers of the time had no idea of what the hell they were bargaining for. That we had 1,220 Floridans that died in World War I, and the Rotary Club of Jacksonville felt it was critical enough for those people to be honored with this memorial. It needs to be remembered. The site of Memorial Park today was um, around the 1890s known as the Robinson property. It was a unkempt, uncultivated, uh, uh, undeveloped piece of land on the bend of the river uh, at a place they call Winter's Point. And the city purchased it for $125,000 in 1919. Well, there wasn't that much natural beauty. It was six acres and it was just a big old sand field when they, when they got started. So they had to create a feeling. And gradually over the next three years, by 1922, they had started construction. And overnight, this uh, land that had laid fallow for so long uh, became a gardening showplace. And by the time it was inaugurated in 1924, it was one of the most beautiful outdoor gardens in the South. And Nina Kummer, of course, was involved in promoting the beauty of our community, and she had a great friendship with the Olmsted firm. It's the famous landscape architecture firm uh, in Brookline, Massachusetts, uh, who ascended to their role from their father, Frederick Law Olmsted, who was considered the father of uh, American landscape architecture, the designer of Hemming Park and Biltmore. Of course, Nina Kummer helped an awful lot and some of the folks in her garden club, but her name comes up over and over again, which it should. By 1919, following World War I, the Citizens Committee had been established with Morgan Gress as its chairman. And when um, the subject of the statue came up to be commissioned by the Citizens Committee, the Rotary Committee, I really believe it was Nina Kummer who connected pillars to the committee. And his sketches of this remarkable piece that had um, the deep metaphorical story of life and the, um, the swirling mass of people caught up in war times. And that was quite the style at the time. The Beaux-Arts philosophy was all about the emotional significance of a piece of art. Pillar's sculpture uh, sketch was so breathtaking that the committee immediately agreed to let him proceed. What must the commitment of the public to this park, and not just the commitment, but the enthusiasm that on Christmas Day, the hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people who left their homes and celebrated uh, that, that grand statue life's unveiling, uh, that was in 1924. Two little girls pulled back the curtain, revealing this uh, nude man standing on a ball, and there was a gasp from the crowd, and then there was roaring applause because it was so beautiful. And it was a place where people would gather, and there'd be art festivals and flying kites and a place to walk your babies. And it was a, it was a hub, a central point for Riverside and Jacksonville. By the 1950s, uh, people began to move away from older neighborhoods like Riverside and Springfield and uh, moving out to the suburbs. And so the care and taking uh, stock of the park w was much less. And uh, I remember in the 1970s, shortly after we founded Riverside Avondale Preservation, we would do work days out in the park just to clean it up because the city's maintenance was so inadequate. And uh, then about 20 years later, a major... A uh, tornado whipped through the park and took out probably two dozen of the biggest oak trees there. So after that, the park again was in very, very sad shape until the Memorial Park Association came along uh, and dedicated their organization to revive this once great park. And the more that they uh, focused on it, the more we realized 
Now, this is just not the most beautiful park in Jacksonville. This is one of the great Olmstead parks in all of the United States. Not until 1986, when the Memorial Park Association was first set up and founded, um, was there any kind of a group that was looking after the park. I think it was local citizens who wanted to put their mark on the park, the city of Jacksonville, of course, which owns it. So you had a lot of individuals and a lot of points of view kind of messing with the Olmstead plan. She was a lovely, elegant woman who uh, was a force of nature to be reckoned with, and uh, she uh, had the foresight to um, recruit all of the neighbors who lived in the surrounding condominiums to form the Memorial Park Association. Essentially, the master plan focused on restoration and rehabilitation of what the original plan was. Early on, they did a, um, a landscape plan for the park, which kind of fell by the wayside until they really got serious in more recent years to not only um, refurbish the park back to the original Olmstead Brothers design, but also to in improve the condition of the fountain. It's been totally restored. The monument that uh, rises above it, replacing the broken concrete on the balustrades, and also repair the broken sidewalks, which made it such a danger. And the final stage that is going on right now is uh, they're renewing the irrigation system so that the park will remain green and lush the way the Olmstead brothers originally envisioned. I think it's very important that the public be better educated, and I think that responsibility falls to us, Memorial Park Association, educated on who the Olmstead brothers were, what their significance was, not only to this country, but to the city of Jacksonville with this park. This park has been hailed as the best or among the best small parks done by the Olmstead brothers in the whole country. I always look at the statue as being the centerpiece of the park. It, it really encompasses what the park is, um, you know, a bunch of people coming together and being united. The angel is beautiful and it, you meet a bunch of angels at the park. To have an Olmstead Park of any size in your city is uh, just marvelous. It feels good to see that wonderful statue, the life statue, silhouetted against the sky. It's pretty striking every single time you see it. And then the process of walking up to it, the serial aspect of seeing it from a distance and then walking up to it and touching it and seeing the water swirling in the basin. That's pretty special. Every doesn't get old for me. It does not get old. It has withstood the test of time. At my age, the park and the war remembrance is all about never losing sight of having a connection. Pardon me. With the past. World War I was only a hundred years ago and that the Americans who fought in World War I were the grandsons of veterans who fought in the war between the states. From the American entry into World War I to the end of the war between the states was only 52 years. It needs to be on the National Register of Historic Places and not remembered in a way that, you know, like an Arlington National Cemetery but in a way that just sort of, you know, makes us grateful, especially in a community where we have such a large population of people that work for the service. You know, they're, they're in our service all the time. It's their career, it's what they do. And they leave their families for months and, you know, months at a time to defend us and our country. It's a big deal. <laughs>